Whew. That is a lot of work. Hello everybody, welcome back. Jiu Jitsu 2000 here today. I'm back with an interesting video for you guys. I'm trying to catch my breath. Whew. I went about a half a mile in this deep snow and we were playing and having a lot of fun I'm exhausted Whew. today I want to talk about ways that you can lose your body's core temperature heat loss mechanisms if you can learn to understand manipulate and control these heat loss mechanisms that I'm fixing to talk about you will find that your effectiveness in keeping and maintaining your body's core temperature will be greatly enhanced in a survival situation so stay with me and I'll be sharing these heat loss mechanisms with you. Okay folks, heat loss mechanisms that I want to talk about in this video today are conduction, convection, radiation, respiration, perspiration. So let's talk about the very first one. Conduction, what is it? Conduction is when the larger, colder body absorbs the heat from the smaller, warmer body. An example of conduction would be heat loss through, let's say for example, it's very cold outside you see there's snow behind me and maybe there's a little bit of a rock exposed and that rock is still very cold if I go over there and I sit my fanny directly on that rock I will suffer heat loss from conduction because the colder larger body will be zapping my body's core temperature from my smaller body so my butt is going to be dissipating heat into that rock so that rock is going to be robbing me of my body's core temperature through conduction <clears throat> convection number two convection what is convection convection is simple convection is airflow now for the lack of a better term convection is wind now if 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 there was a crosswind coming towards me and there's snow flying and all these cold temperatures being pushed into my body through wind and I don't have these protective clothing on and, and all these layers that stop convection from coming into my body say I'm sitting here in a t-shirt and all this winds coming in I will be I will be noticing that my body's core temperature is going to be getting zapped due to convection. It's going to just rob the heat right out of my body and it's going to take it and blow it right down the hill. The third one, radiation. Heat loss through radiation. Right now, I have a hat on. If I take my hat off, I will radiate my body's heat out of my body. Okay? 
So I want to keep my hat on when it's really cold, so that'll keep a lid, if you will, on my body, keeping my body's core temperature inside. You can think of radiation in terms of a shelter also. If I have a primitive shelter with a roof over me, that roof, if I have a small fire inside my shelter, that roof is going to keep the heat because the fire heat's going to come up, it's going to bounce off that roof and it's going to radiate that heat right back down into my shelter. If I do not have a roof on my shelter, that fire, that heat is going to radiate right out of my shelter into the sky and it's not going to be doing anything for me. So to stop heat loss from radiation, keep your hats on and make sure that your shelter has some sort of roof that again that that heat can bounce off of and come back down into your shelter. The fourth one, respiration. Respiration is heat loss due to your breath. <coughs> your lungs are full of warm air. If it's very cold outside and you breathe and you see that mist come out of your breath, you are now suffering heat loss through respiration. Try not to let that happen. If you want to keep the body's core temperature inside of it, one, don't get too excited to where you're breathing very rapidly. If you're breathing rapidly, you're going to be doing a lot of expelling of that heat out of your body because your breath is going so fast. Try to stay calm. Try to keep yourself composed so that your breathing pattern is nice and slow and you're keeping the most amount of heat in your body as possible. Another thing that you can do to keep uh, respiration in your body and to prevent the heat loss through respiration is to put a small towel over your face so that when you breathe out, I mean you don't want to suffocate yourself obviously but you want to kind of keep it you know kind of close so that when the heat comes out it, it absorbs into the towel and it keeps your face warm. So how do you prevent heat loss from respiration? Don't get too excited. Heat loss number five, perspiration. Perspiration is when you are in a cold environment and you get some physical activity going and your body starts getting hot because you got all these coats on and your body says hey I'm getting hot I need to cool myself I'm gonna go ahead and sweat now when you have sweat underneath your coats in a winter environment like this that could kill you so try not to get your physical activity so high to the point where you're gonna overheat your core temperature which triggers your body to cool itself so you don't want to perspirate. You don't want to sweat. Heat loss through perspiration. You don't want that to happen. So if you're going to be out in the wintertime environment and you're going to be working, maybe you're cutting firewood or whatever you're doing, and you're starting to notice that you're warmed up, shed a layer. Take a layer off. Because if you're starting to notice that you're starting to sweat, that's, that's when you're starting down the dark, dark road of heat loss through perspiration. You don't want that to happen. Immersion. Immersion is very simple. You fall into a cold body of water. You will immediately suffer heat loss through immersion. This, in my opinion, is the most dangerous of the heat loss mechanisms. Heat loss by immersion is deadly. It can put you down quick. So how do you prevent it? Be smart. If you make an accident, you're out in your snowmobile and you crash and you fall in some cold, icy water, the first thing I would recommend, make a fire if you can, start shedding your layers. Shed your layers of clothing. If there's any kind of wind coming up against that fire, get on the downwind side. So let the wind push the heat into your body. You'll gain heat through convection. You'll also gain heat through the fire's heat radiating onto yourself and you'll also uh, gain heat by taking those layers off radiation. Again, I just mentioned that, convection. Um, if you have any kind of snow underneath your feet, put some kind of layer down so you're not losing your heat through your feet through conduction. If you're walking around in this snow barefooted, you're going to be suffering from conduction, heat loss. So these are the heat loss mechanisms. If you can learn to understand them 
learn to manipulate them so that you can control your body's core temperature, you will find that your effectiveness in self-sustainability in a survival situation will be greatly enhanced by this knowledge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right now I noticed something that I thought was worth making a note of. My little guy right here, you can see he didn't want to be suffering from conduction anymore with the cold snow. So he came over here and he's standing in the pine needles. The same thing with my other dog. She's soaking in that nice sunlight, warming her body up, and look at the natural insulator that she's using to battle from conduction. This is, I mean, this is something so simple, even dogs understand it. Look at this guy. He knows what he's doing. He's getting away from conduction. Now this puppy over here, she doesn't, she hasn't learned that technique yet apparently. <laughs> She's looking for shelter. <laughs> She's trying to stop radiation, I guess. Look at, she's looking for something with a roof. <laughs> she right now is suffering from convection and conduction. <laughs>